And um, uh, Florida is a nice place. Might be too hot though. Is your mom on? No. Oh. Florida would be too hot. I mean, it's like 75 degrees or something. Who'd want to be where it's 75 degrees? <laughs> Everybody's hand goes up. Uh, me. <laughs> We're going to have a good study tonight. Glad to have all you with us. Get all your friends, neighbors, relatives. Yeah. Amen. Countrymen. <laughs> you know, I, I have said for years, that's the beauty of the United States of America, that no matter what temperature you would like to experience, we have it. Yeah, because you can fly all you the way. Get bored. You can fly all the way to the Arctic, and get really cool. And you can go all the way to the tip of Florida and get really hot. Mm -hmm. Oh, you probably won't get all that distance in one day. Maybe you can get there in one day, but uh, you got the mountains with the snow, and you got uh, the beaches. And that's the beauty of the United States of America. Take a cruise, take a tour, see what you can see. In the mighty name of Jesus. We've been studying. Let's see where we at. Pretty much ready, aren't we? Mm -hmm. 68 and the birds are singing. You got to love it when ah, the birds are singing, man. Yeah. <clears throat> Of course, our, our birds are sitting 32 below and take showers. That's true. <laughs> our little sparrow birds outside our, our deck door, they sing at, you know, 25 below and they take showers there and they get in the, in the, in the tub of water. So <laughs> anyways, that's a beautiful thing to hear the birds uh, singing away. All right. Oops. Here we go. We are at We have been studying uh growing grace. <laughs> we are studying tonight. How it is that Brother Mike and Sister Shannon disappear from all the comments and we're all still left. <laughs> Thou shalt not freaketh. It is not a, the rapture unless, of course, you and I see them in the air. Then if it is the raptureth. <laughs> Come on, man. Um, even Jesus had to sleep. Even Jesus had to sleep. He was so tired that they threw him a pillow in the back of the boat, and he went to sleep in a storm. I would say that's tired. Yeah. I would say that's tired. And, um, you know, thank God for sleep. Thank God for sleep and rest. Yep. So we've been studying growing grace and in the knowledge of the Lord and Savior. And uh, it was a great study last week. We're going to hit it again this week. And somewhere here, we're going to get some angels involved in this. Because, uh, because that's our verse for the month. It's about angels. And uh, we're glad to have you here. You know, um, <laughs> so we want to hear and put the speaker by your pillow. So Shannon, if he don't call, you call. <laughs> <laughs> Hallelujah! Thank God for good folks, even those Amen. who snore. Amen. The, the one lady said, "I don't snore. I I have the roar of the lion of the tribe of Judah in the inside of me, and that's what comes out." While I sleep, according to all the power of God wrapped up inside me. Wah! Wah! Are you ready? It's time to get started here. It is 
Monday, March 15th, 2021. Wow. 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 Yeah. Amazing. I remember being a kid thinking Jesus was coming back in 1978. There's a whole bunch of you that wasn't even born in 1978. And uh, I was, that was the day I had to come home. And uh, my mom and dad wasn't there, man. I got on the CB radio. I know some of you may not know what that is, but I got on the CB radio and checked with all my friends. Where's your mom? And they, none of them was home. <laughs> wow. And then, of course, the only one of the friends we couldn't raise on the CB radio, that's where all the moms were at, and they weren't allowed to be on the phone, you know, on the CB talking to us. <laughs> so were you out in the front yard jumping? We, we were out in the front yard <laughs> in the grass praying, Jesus, forgive us of our sin. Come back and get us. Come back and get us. <clears throat> all right, here we go. Here we go. Here we go. Thanks for being a part of our lives and Thanks for being a part of the community of faith. Thank you guys for making this a wonderful place yeah. where we can all grow and, de and develop together in God. And you welcome, welcome new people. All of you that are part of this program with us every day and you don't sign in. Don't worry about feeling like you got to be a part of all this conversation. Although we welcome you to. Yeah. You're welcome to jump in. Love to hear it. Just because all the old hats are here making all the conversation doesn't mean they're the only one to get to talk. Mm -hmm. And um, nobody here is a is a hog for the um, comments. Just jump in, jump in, and we all get along together. Beautiful. It's called the body of Christ. Amen. No matter how important the heart is, so is the liver. You know, and so are the lungs. So is the nose hairs. It's not a more glorious part, but it is of absolute importance. And we welcome every one of you to be a part of us with us and just join in. And we're glad to see you here. Uh, I see the day when there'll be a thousand of us on here all at the same time. Yeah, that'd be a whole different story and how much this interpersonal communication happens. But there'll be there'll be whole groups of us in different places doing it, yeah. and it it's just what it's what God wants to do, and it's how He wants to do it. And we say, "Speak, Lord, your children are listening. Amen. Your children are listening." Yeah, uh, you know, I was talking with Brother Dan again today. I got this figured out with Dan now, All right, Brother Dan. By the time he gets all the posts made and everything, we are so far in the lag. He's like, well, I'll just call him and talk to him. <laughs> so tonight, all of tonight's topic will be from Brother Dan and all of the revelation he's been receiving the whole time. He's not made any comments. All right, that's just a joke. But <laughs> Had a good conversation with Dan this afternoon. Talking about the fact. That if we truly were in connection with our spirit that's been reborn, recreated, and filled with the Holy Spirit of God, all day long we would actually be making statements out of our mouth where it was just the absolute direction of the Holy Spirit. Yeah, wow. Because really, we would be like what Jesus was everywhere he went. And Jesus drew a crowd. Why? Why? Because out of his mouth came those life-giving words of God. Well, Pastor, how in the world do we get there? You just keep walking. You just keep walking. Every day, you walk with the Father, and you make sure you shut everything off and shut everything down, and you get alone with him and say, I want to be alone with you. Turn everybody off. Turn every preacher off. Turn everything off and quiet. I remember Brother James Randolph, his Dr. Mark T. Barclay's son-in-law married his daughter. There was a period of about three months there a while ago that he was challenging everybody to go to your local park or a place where they got a long walkway or even just walking down the side of the road and leave your phone at home 
and just walk and talk with God for about an hour. Yes. Yes, it would become important. Where'd my watch go? You see it? <clears throat> it would become important that you would actually know what one of these are. <laughs> and some of you might wear them. But it was interesting. That thought put my phone away, put my computer away, put everything away, and just me and God all by myself. Woo! We've filled our life with distractions. Ready? Even some of them are Christian distractions. Yeah. All right. And it becomes of an absolute um, uh, importance that you and I say, hold it. I got to shut that down, shut that down, shut that down, shut that down. And I got to be alone with Jesus. Yeah. And then when you get there, Say, Father, teach me, help me to be alone with you. So at all moments of every day, I can hear your voice. I can see your will and I can bless people's lives. That's a big thing. And if you don't shut the distractions down, then it gets difficult. Anyways, that's what we're teaching and we're talking about last week. And that's what we're doing this week. Here's the interesting thing. In the middle of whatever your life is, everybody's got a different one. God wants to be right in the middle of that life. And he is showing. Everybody say it. He is showing. He is. It's not maybe, might be, or could be. He is showing you and I how to do that every single day. And the more you walk with him, the more the more at peace you get. I remember back in the 90s, man, the beginning of the 90s in that word revolution where it was just word, 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 man. You couldn't listen to enough preachers. Yeah. God already knows what Dr. Reverend so-and-so thinks. Hold it. Hold it. As much as I tell some of you to listen to these programs right here over and over, and you need to. After you've taken a, a couple sets of notes by them, now sit down and turn it all off. Yeah. You and the Father, get that note out and say, now, he was saying this verse, this verse, and this verse. And when you do, the Father's going to say, and I want to add that one, that one, that one, that one, and that one. Why? Because he's he, everybody say he. he, he is trying to get you and me to a specific spot he wants us, regardless of what everybody else wants us to do. And the only place you ever want to be is where he wants you to be. I can tell you right now, there's about 15 people right now in my life who want me in a bunch of different places. But there's only one place I'm going to be, and that is right where the Father wants me to be. And um, I was on the phone today with Dr. Barkley, and I was talking to him about the fact that he's been my pastor now for 30 years. 30 years. Same pastor for 30 years. Do you know what level of peace and strength and comfort that brings you? Solidity, stability, the safety net that is. Why? One man of God who has known you from your infancy, as you would say it, to now 30 years later. Whew, powerful force. Powerful force. And guess what? I still shut off Dr. Berkeley. And I get alone with Jesus and the Father by the Holy Spirit and say, help me get to where you want me to be. And of course, every, you know, when I get there, God has been speaking it all along to, well, 
from the beginning, he spoke it through pastor because he could see so much more than I could see. Mm -hmm. And uh, I remember one time I called him up and I said, pastor, don't worry. This is, this is the beginning. Yes. <laughs> As a preacher say often, don't worry. This is, this is not the introduction. Yes, it is. <laughs> I remember one time calling pastor saying, and I didn't realize ministry was this fun. He goes, what? I'm like, I didn't realize it was this fun. I was a lot of work. He goes, well, there's a lot of work, but it's a whole lot of fun. Why? Because you're making a difference in people's lives and you can see it. And you get this great calm and peace about you. That I'm being led by the spirit of God, being led by the spirit of God. And what a powerful force it is. Well, Tony, welcome. Good to have you with us tonight. It's good to have you. Um, it's good to see your smiling face. Although we can't see it, it's good to see your smiling face here tonight. Now, let me make sure I say this again. Those of you who are with us, if you want me to know your names here, you please sign in and say something because otherwise, um, let's see. Please sign in and say something because that makes it easier to see. In Jesus mighty and name. And we pray for everyone by name. And we pray for everyone by name at the end of the program and daily. You guys are in our prayers daily. It's it's a very interesting thing. I uh I all of a sudden all of a sudden as we do this work we start really racking up the hours of prayer. For each of you. Mm -hmm. it, it's a very interesting thing. Because all of a sudden it's like man. We see this. We see that. We pray it. We speak it. We declare it. We pray it. We speak it. We declare it. We pray it. We speak it. We declare it. We see things happening. We speak that. We declare it. And all of a sudden there's some serious amount of prayer in this mm -hmm. thing. And when you start looking at what's going on here. There's. There is, there's a spiritual force here that you just, you don't see many places. Huh? Yes? Isn't that something? Now, just like that, the glory walks in the room. His name is Jesus. Hmm. Well, let's pray a prayer. Let's let's pray. Wow. That is amazing. Hmm. Everybody, let's pray. Father, we thank you. We thank you for your presence tonight. We thank you for each of these believers that are with us. Thank you for the fun conversation between all of us, family members, mm -hmm. motorcycles and birds and warm weather and cold weather and all the fun stuff we talk about every day. Thank you for the unity of the spirit that is felt here. Whew, come on. Thank you for the blessing of the Lord that makes rich and adds no sorrow with it. Thank you, Lord. That in this time tonight, right here, right now. Right here, right now. The manifest presence of Almighty God hmm. is in every single house, wherever we, wherever this signal has taken it. The manifest presence of Almighty God is there. We thank you for it, Jesus. Lord, you manifest this presence here. Whew. 
I ask that you manifest this presence there. Yeah. Wherever they are. Big house, little house. Big dream, little dream. Whether they've known you their whole life or they're just now coming to you. May this manifest presence of Almighty God fill their heart and their minds in Jesus. Everybody just lift your hands and receive it, that presence of God right now. Receive it right into your house, into your, wherever you are, in your car, if you're driving down the road. In your boat, if you're out fishing. <laughs> mm -hmm. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Say this with me. I receive your presence. I receive your presence, Lord. Transforming my life. And setting me free. Setting me free. From anything that binds my life. And keeps me from enjoying you. I receive you, Holy Spirit. Wow. Wow. Say it right out loud. I receive you, Holy Spirit. I receive you, Holy Spirit. In my life and in my home. And in my life and in my home. In Jesus' mighty name. In Jesus Ready? Just say it. Take take everything out of here. Take everything out of here. Help me make every part of my life. Help me make every part of my life. That perfect thing you want it to be. That perfect thing you want it to be. In Jesus' mighty name. In Jesus' mighty name. In Jesus' mighty name. Whew. You know it's very interesting. Since the first of the year. January 1st, when God spoke that prophetic utterance here. And he said, this is a tsunami of my blessing all year long. That is a prophetic word for this body that you should get out and listen to every day. You should play it every day and just say, I receive this. Because a tsunami of his blessing does it mean that doesn't just mean uh, there's a big funnel and that it's dumping, you know, gold coins on your desk. Although he said gold coins that night. I received gold coins, you know. Oh, my goodness. Mike Tony received a gold coin. That was made of silver and copper. That was gold. Whew. Wow. Anyways, I'll receive gold coins I can turn in at the gold shop, but I receive those golden coins too. But see, that's a that's a tsunami of his blessing. I can tell right here at the beginning, we're going to start right here, right now, and go into this word. It, it's what the Father wants tonight. But Pastor, that's out of our normal. Well, um, it seems, uh, that's it, Mike. Yeah. Uh, it, yeah, it truly is. Uh, that's, you know, the face value is one quarter. That's worth a quarter of your life. That's what that's worth. Because of what was what was connected to it and related to it. Watch this. So, here we go into this word right now. Well, what about communion, Pastor? That'll come. That'll come. I can just tell as soon as I start talking, the Spirit of God wants to just flow. Now, 
I'm going to have to look up a couple verses. Uh, there's one Jesus said is true riches. And I'm sure that's probably in the Sermon on the Mount. And I want us to grab that, that verse. All right. Luke 16, 11, Commit to your trusted true riches. Yeah, that's it. Luke chapter 16. Wow. Wow, look at this verse, guys. Thank God that the Spirit of God is with us 24-7, 365. Now, <laughs> when I was setting up the program and I was making the title, I said, Father, what's the title for tonight? He said, it's the secret place. Grow in grace and in the knowledge of our Lord and Savior. Let's just read this. Let's read this. This is Luke chapter 16. And we're going to go from 1 through 13. I want to read the whole story and then we're going to we're going to stop on the verse number 11 and that's where we're going but um wow thank you holy spirit of god Whew. let's let's read um verses 10 11 and 12 you is faithful in what is least, least is also faithful in much. He who is unjust in what is least is unjust also in much. Therefore, if you've not been faithful in the unrighteous mammon, who will commit to your trust the true riches? If you've not been faithful in what is another man's, who will give you that which is your own? Let's go back now. Chapter 16, verse number one. He also said this to his disciples. There was a certain rich man who was a steward, had a steward. An accusation was brought to him that he was, this man was wasting his goods. So he called him and said, what is this I hear about you? Give an account of your stewardship, for you can no longer be steward. Verse three. Then the steward said within himself, what shall I do? For my master is taking away my stewardship from me. I cannot dig and I'm ashamed to beg. <laughs> I, I literally had a man say that to me. Hi, Chris and Sunday. Welcome. Good to have you with us tonight. I literally had a preacher say that to me one time. I asked him why he was the pastor of the church. He was a mess. Absolute mess. He said, well, I'm not called to this. This is just the easiest job I can find. I'm like, oh what? What did you just say? He goes, well, I'm I'm a good student. So I went to Bible college, got my master's degree so I could be a preacher. I'm not going to go dig ditches or weld or something. He was the pastor of a church. He was not a pastor. Listen, <laughs> all the people in that church voted him in to be their pastor. He literally made that statement right there. Verse four, I have resolved what to do that when I'm put out of the stewardship, they may receive me into their houses. So he called every one of his master's debtors to him and said to the first, how much do we owe my master? And he said, a hundred measures of oil. And he said to him, take your bill and sit down quickly and write 50. He said to another, how much do you owe? And he said, 
a hundred measures of wheat. And he said, take your bill and write 80. Master commended the unjust steward because he had dealt shrewdly. For the sons of the world are more shrewd in their generation than the sons of light. Interesting statement, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, it is. And I say to you, make friends for yourselves by unrighteous mammon, that when you fail, they may receive you into everlasting home. Now we're back to verse 10. He who is faithful in what is least is faithful in what is much. He who is unfaithful in the least will be unjust, unfaithful in what is much. Therefore, if you've not been faithful in unrighteous mammon, that's money he's talking about, who will commit to your trust the true riches? And if you've not been faithful in what is another man's, who will give you what is your own? No servant can serve two masters, for he'll hate the one and love the other, or he will be loyal to the one and despise the other. You cannot serve God and mammon. Now watch this. Jesus said, who will commit to your trust the true riches? Now, I believe it's 1 Corinthians chapter 6. Well, that's a good one. Uh, but that's not it. <laughs> Maybe it's 2 Corinthians chapter 6. Anyways, it's the set of verses. Somebody help me find them. Where we're going to be judged. Our works are going to be judged. By fire. Huh. Well, nothing to do but dig it up. Come on, let's just go there. If you got it, somebody help me with it. First Corinthians chapter three. There we go. Oh yeah. First Corinthians chapter three. Thank you. Brother Mike, I've read that to mean work ethic and integrity. That is uh, most definitely a part of it. Uh, because that's what that whole parable is about, is your work ethic and your integrity. Because, uh, you know, he got word the man was stealing his money. That That's not integrity and that's not work ethic. And... Um, you, you can't, uh, you got to have integrity in order to do the work of ministry. There's no way around it. Watch this. We're going to go to, we're going to go to chapter three. Let's read. Let's start with verse five and we'll go down to verse 17. And just read this whole chapter. <laughs> oh, that's awesome. Everybody bless. You ready? Say this with me. I bind you, spirit of Jezebel. <laughs> Get out of Siri. Wait. Uh I don't know whether you'll get it out of Siri, but it's always good to bind the spirit of Jezebel because that's a manipulating and controlling demon. Amen. Yeah, yeah, amen. Here we go. Look at this. First Corinthians chapter three, verse five. Who then is Paul and who is Apollos, but ministers through whom you believed? As the Lord gave to each one. I planted, Apollos watered, but God gave the increase. Now, I'm going to use me. My dad was my pastor all the way up till I was like 23 or four or something, 25, I guess. So he did all my pastoring up to that point. 
And then it took another, wow, 10 years to get to Dr. Barkley. Okay. But that relationship with Dr. Barkley is a supernatural one. First Corinthians chapter 12, where it says he places you in the body as he wills. Man, once I, it's like, kaboom, this is my body. And you knew it. It's like I opened the door, walked in, and it's like, yep, this is where I belong. Yeah. This is where, and I, I hadn't even heard a message preached. Why? Because I knew the voice of the shepherd. Yeah. My sheep hear my voice, and it'll be in the man's voice. Watch this. But in my life is not only Robert Cottle, my dad, Walter Bongard, my grandpa, all right? Brother Hugh Clark, old Kentucky colonel. My goodness, was he an amazing man. He was the coolest guy there ever was. He had one of them big, huge Victorian houses in Georgetown, Kentucky, and we would stop there on the way home from school. And, and you know the coolest thing about him is iced tea or lemonade and whatever cookie she had, and he had pet turtles that were tied to a chain in the backyard. <laughs> Seriously. <laughs> He'd put some kind of a hook through the corner of their shell where it didn't hurt them. Uh -huh. And they were on this chain. They'd just walk around the grass. And they it was like his deal had to had these pet had these pet turtles. Hi, Rebecca. Welcome. It's so funny. But the man was an amazing man of God. <laughs> amazing man of God. Anyways. Then I got, there was one point that it was Oral Roberts. And before he's followed, Jimmy Swaggart. They were the ones that was passing me. Right online. I, I couldn't find a church. And then there was different men. Now, since Dr. Barkley, he's been my only pastor. This is an interesting message to be yeah, preaching it is. today. <laughs> it is. But it's probably coming out of the fact that I had a nice... Long conversation with Dr. Barkley today. So it, it's what's I, that's exactly what's going on. So I had a minute, I had a time with the pastor. And then today, I can tell right now, as soon as we got into this tonight, God said it's time to just go. Watch this. I planted Apollos water, but God gave the increase. Amen. Mm -hmm. So then, neither he who plants is anything, nor he who waters, but God who gives the increase. Now, he who plants. And he who waters are one. Right? Watch this. And each one will receive his own reward according to his own labor. For we are God's fellow workers, and you are God's field, and you are God's building. Well, think about it. Fellow labors, God's field, and God's building. And this is all in one chapter. <laughs> it's amazing. And, and you're part of the body there. We threw it all in. You're the field. You're the you're the building. You're the body. Amen. Hell, let's throw it in. And we're all sheep. Amen. Glory be to God. But watch this. Verse 10. According to the grace of God, which was given to me as a wise master builder, I have laid the foundation. Another builds on it. But let each one take how he builds on it. Take heed. For no other foundation can anyone lay than that which is laid, which is Jesus Christ. That's why when I sit here and teach you, I will not have any other book but this one. That's why when you guys send me verses, I grab them verses and say, now, wait a minute. How does that verse fit in here? Where does it fit? Why? Because the word must become the solid foundation of our life. Now, my pastor, Mark T. Barkley, is, is Dr. Mark T. Barkley. He's got a doctor of divinity. I'm not mocking him in any sense of the word. The point why we say that is, who you are in God has nothing to do with how many titles are in front of your name. Amen. Right? Yeah. 
Whether or not you walk with God has nothing to do with any title. I've, I've had people call me just about every title you can imagine and a whole bunch of other names. And that doesn't matter. What matters is at the end of the day, the father looks down from heaven and says, well done, my good and faithful servant. And actually, we're not servants anymore. We're, we're, we're sons and daughters. And father And for father to look down and say, well done, good and faithful son. Huh? Wait. Wait. For the father to look at you at the end of your day and say, well done. You are my son in whom I am well pleased. I hope you can feel that glory rolling because the glory is rolling. It's like I can't see it yet, but I can't see it actually in the room, but I can, it's like rolls of glory. It's like clouds of glory. I can see them in the spirit. This is a... The most amazing, I've never seen this before in, in the ministry. Never, I've never seen this. So I pray that it rolls in your house right now. Amen. Amen. Oh, I'm serious about that. Here, Pastor, why would you want me to see clouds? Well, I don't. But when that glory rolls in your house, it purifies it. It helps you get rid of anything that's dross inside your house. Have you ever noticed I don't tell you what to get rid of in your house. I just don't do it. Why? You don't need me telling you. You need that relationship with the father. So he says, hey, what about this? And you go, well, yeah. If a man tells you to do it, then, you're, then it's all about man. Yeah. But when God Almighty speaks to you, and it goes, you're like, wow, do I feel free? Do I ever feel free? Ever feel there's no greater feeling than to go through all of your house and on every shelf and every drawer and every place of your life, you just look at your house and say, There's nothing here that the father wouldn't wouldn't want me to have. With, with no with no, with no re weird religious restrictions. That's a weird story. I'm not going to go there. I got to keep talking. Here we go. Look at verse uh, number 10. According to the grace of God, which was given to me as a wise master builder, I have laid the foundation and another builds on it. But let each one take care of how he builds. Th 11. No other foundation can anyone lay. And that which is laid, which is Jesus Christ. Now, if anyone builds on this foundation, here's, here's the verse we were talking about with Mike. With gold, silver, precious stones, that's the, that's the true riches. And then the other one is wood, hay, and straw. Each one's work will become clear, for the day will declare it, because it will be revealed by fire. And the fire will test each one of our works of what sort it is. Say this with me. The day of fire is coming. The day of fire is coming. <laughs> and wait, and we're not freaked out about it in any sense of the word. Why? Because, ready for this? This is so amazing with the community of faith. Because if we would judge ourselves, we will not be judged. God gives you and I, once we get the revelation, the power, the determination on this earth to judge ourselves. Right now. And if you and I judge ourselves right now and shut the mouth of everybody else up around you saying, hey, we love you. Thank you for loving us and believing us. But we're judging all of our life by this word. Man, all of a sudden, when we get to that other side, I've been saying it to you now for a couple of weeks. When you walk into this judgment room, you're going to be like, Jesus! And he's going to be like, come on over here, dude, let's go. <laughs> Why? 
because that will have been your relationship with him every single day right here. And the sooner we get there, the sooner we get there, the easier our life becomes. And with, the more we are just in his yoke is easy and his burden is low. Yeah, amen. Why? Because there will no longer be improper motives in our heart coming out for anything. Because that's what that that's what that story Jesus was telling them is about. If you're faithful in least, you'll also be faithful in much. And who's going to give you the true riches? Well, what is the true riches? The souls of men and women around you. God could give two flying flips about gold, silver, and precious stones. What makes up his crown? Is you and I who are his jewels. Hold your hand there. Grab your one of these pieces of paper. And hold your place there. And go with me. To um, Malachi chapter 3. Watch this. For those of you that are Italian. His name's Malachi. Malachi chapter 3. And we're going down to verse 16. Now watch this. Then those who feared the Lord spoke to one another. Somebody want to type it in? That's C-O-F. Then those who feared the Lord spoke to one another. All right? That's us. Watch this. Us. Oh, geez, what did I do that for? If you would kindly pin something for me. Oh. and then unpin it, it's amazing how that works. <laughs> there we go. Everybody, pause for a minute. I've just got all excited about posting something and I forgot. <laughs> And the Lord listened. Look at this verse. And the Lord listened and heard them who feared his name as they got together and talked about him. Listen, he is talking. He is writing a book about this right now. Right here, right now. He's writing a book. A book of remembrance was written before him for those who fear the Lord and who meditate on his name. This is Old Testament. This is the last prophet. He doesn't speak for 400 years after this. But when it goes through the cross, he's still writing a book. The book of the Acts of the Apostles are still being written in this day. There's still apostles in this day who have another chapter and another chapter and another chapter and another chapter and another chapter. And, another chapter, and it's being written. Look at verse 17. They shall be mine, says the Lord of hosts, on the day that I make them my jewels. Say this. I am a jewel in somebody's crown that's going to be cast before Jesus. So, if you never considered, if you never considered yourself a jewel, there it is. You are a jewel. Now, when we come back over here to 1 Corinthians chapter 3, watch this. Verse 13. Each one's work will become clear. For the day will declare it. Because it will be revealed by fire. And the fire will test each one's work of what sort that work is. I read that, Chris, Rich. And it's like, wow, well, you juiced me right there. And like, oh, Jesus, Lord have mercy. I'm being judged by the Father right now. 
that's going to make no sense in 30 seconds. <laughs> yes, there are. Yes, there is. Yes, so funny. <laughs> People be watching this. They're like, I don't know who that Mike Tony guy is, but he's make some of the most amazing posts there is out there. <laughs> but but it makes sense to us, so don't worry about it. We all every time we go back and look, we'll be like, oh geez, there you hit hit it again, Mike. Watch this. 14. If anyone's work which he has built on it endures, he'll receive a reward. Verse, I'm in first Corinthians 3 14. If anyone's work is burned, is burned. He will suffer loss, but he himself will be saved as so by fire. Do you not know that you are the temple of God and that the spirit of God dwells in you? If anyone defiles the temple of God, God will destroy him. For the temple of God is holy, whose temple you are. Now listen, let's, let's get this um, God will destroy him verse. Settled right here. All right. <laughs> My words are not encrypted from you before you. <laughs> That's too funny. Now let's 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 lay this out here. Um, whew. all right, his wrath is for his enemies. Somebody remind me of where that's at. Let's find that verse. That's that's another one we got to be at tonight. Watch this 17 says, If anyone defiles the temple of God, God will destroy him, for the temple of God is holy, whose temple you are. Now, watch. The reason Paul is putting this in here is there's people who don't ever have any concern about their life and they don't care whether their temple is defiled by God in God's eyes or not. Well, Paul's got a warning to you, and that is that you grow in grace. That was Peter, actually. And that you walk with God. And that you let you, you count all earthly accomplishments as dung. All right. So that you might find Christ and be found faithfully walking with him. Now watch. Say this. I am the temple. I am the temple. Did you find that verse? Yeah. Um, Nahum. One. That's not the one I was looking for. Oh, think. it's not? I don't think so. It's a New Testament verse. Uh, that'll work. We'll, we'll use that. Look at Nahum chapter 1, and um, let's go to verse 2. Uh, it's not the one I was looking for in the New Testament, but that's all right. We'll find it. Watch this. Nahum 1, 2. This is Nahum. Hmm. He's one of the little prophets. Watch. God is jealous and the Lord avenges. The Lord avenges and is furious. The Lord will take vengeance on his adversaries. And he reserves wrath for his enemy. All right. Now, remember that his wrath is for his enemies. Because his love is for you and me. Goodness sakes alive. Here we go. <laughs> Isn't this just something? I wrote these notes. No, just go with me to Hebrews chapter 12. <laughs> I 
I just wrote that and said, I just wrote these notes and then I opened up and it was just a completely white sheet. Oh. Yeah. Sorry. I know exactly where to go. Hebrews chapter 12. <laughs> wow. Jesus, how you're leading us on a path right here. Everybody say, I love the secret place. I love the secret place. Amen. What is the secret place, Pastor? Anytime you and I get alone with God by ourselves, whether you're in a prayer closet in your house, all right, or you're just driving down the road and you pull the shade on everybody around you and you turn off the radio and you turn off the phone and you say, it's just you and me, Father, driving down the road on the way to get the groceries. You got a secret place happening, right? Now, all of what we just read by Paul are things that you and I deal with in the secret place. And God deals with us in 1 Corinthians chapter 3. Somebody's building in your life who you're who you're listening to in your ear, right? We studied that a week ago on Saturday night, um, who it is you're listening to. Because Jesus said, take heed how you hear. Because what you're listening to is going to affect how free your life is or how bound it is. All right. Now, yeah. now we got Paul over here in, in 1 Corinthians chapter 3, and he's saying, don't let any just anybody build on your foundation. Because if you do, all of a sudden you're gonna get their brick in there. And if that brick ain't the right brick, man, that's a deal. Now listen, don't nobody freak out. This isn't a bondage thing. This isn't, a, this isn't anything except you learning to walk with God and hear his voice. Yeah. Now, Brother Mike posted it in there earlier that said, there's no other voice better to hear than his than, than God's voice. Shut it all down. I don't remember exactly how he said it, but it was a good statement. Now watch. Because when you get to this place in the secret place, you're going to use reading. You're going to use studying, meditation. You're going to use confessions. You're going to use fasting. You're going to use prayer. You're going to use preachers preaching. You're going to use praise and worship. All of that is going to be a part of your secret place. Mm -hmm. All of it is. And all of it is what's put together is what's going to make you have the most powerful spiritual life you ever had. Here's the cool part. Hebrews 11, 6 says, he's the rewarder of them who diligently seek him and nobody can judge your diligence level or mine. It is not my place to judge your diligence level or mine. Amen. Amen. Why? Because you got to be diligent before God. It's the most liberating place for a pastor is to teach people to hear the voice of God. It's the most liberating place you'll ever be. Why? Because as soon as I get your ear tuned to the voice of the Father, we will conquer this earth like there's never been anybody conquered it before because we will all be functioning arm in arm, side by side, hand in hand, face forward, looking at our enemy, crushing him, crushing and removing the enemy from someplace he thought he had a foothold. Because he don't. Jesus disarmed him. I now, right now, have 15 verses I need to go to. And I got, I, I got. Where did I tell you to go? Hebrews 12. Hebrews chapter 12. Of course, you guys know where I wanted you to go. <laughs> Well, yes, we did. <laughs> Jesus, where do I go first? All right. Here we go. We're going to start right at Hebrews 12, 1. And wherever we might read this whole chapter. Um. Go clear down through 17. We'll see where we're going. Welcome to the walk through the word 
with the Holy Spirit tonight about the secret place and the strength of our Christian life. We welcome you to be with us tonight. Now, chapter 12 starts out with a therefore. What do you do when you see a therefore? Find out what it is there for. Thank you, Chris, for your help in, in um, uh, YouTube. Thank you guys for helping us in uh, Facebook. Here we go. Hey, Phyllis Raymond's here. I always feel like boxing with Phyllis Raymond. That's, that's like, why? Well, I, because she's like this, this, this tenacious warrior. Wait, wait, no, it's not boxing, it's sparring. There's a difference. Therefore, we also, since we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses, let us run with patience. No, wait. Let us lay aside every weight and the sin which easily ensnares us. Everybody, everybody's got to do that. But wait, as soon as you're filled with the righteousness and you get that revelation, that sin is no longer going to ensnare you. Why? You're filled with the righteousness of God. You got a new nature. As soon as that revelation hits you, now all the rest of this comes. Watch this. And let us run with patience the race that is set before us. Looking unto Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith. He started it and he'll put the finishing touch on it. It's, it's this. It's not only the concrete guys pouring the foundation, but the finished carpenter putting in the trim around the door. Yeah. All right. <laughs> Who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame and is set down at, at the right hand of the majesty on high of the throne of God. I've got a bunch of verses mixed in here. Watch this. <laughs> now. Pause for just a minute. Where's that verse at? Hebrews 11, 32. Watch this. This is really good. Holy Spirit. Wow. This is really good. We love you, fellas. Glad to have you with us. Hey, everybody. Phyllis Raymond on deck. 32. What more shall I say? Time would fail me to tell of Gideon and Barak and Samson and Jephthah, David, Samuel, and the prophets. Paul's telling you he wanted to write about all them in this chapter. You know how long this chapter would be? Watch this. Who through faith subdued kingdoms, worked righteousness. That's OT he's talking about. They worked righteousness, obtained promises, Stop the mouths of lions, quench the violence of sword, escape the edge of the sword, out of weakness were made strong. Let the weak say, what? I am, I am strong. strong. Well, what does the strong say? I am stronger. I'm stronger. I'm moving from glory to glory, from faith to faith, from grace to grace. Amen. Amen? Amen. There comes a point where we have to stop saying we're weak and we should be strong. Well, pastor, how can you say that you'll never be weak again? Well, I don't know. After I've studied the word a little bit, why would I ever be weak when he is the strength of my life? Amen. Amen? If I'm filled with the Holy Spirit and I've gotten all the junk out of my life that's slowing me down and I'm truly one with the Father and I'm walking in the righteousness of God, I should not be weak. I should be strong. Amen. What limitation do you want to put on yourself? I don't. Wait, Pastor, are you telling us if we're if we're weak that we're wrong? No, I'm saying get to the point of saying I'm strong. Let the weak say, I am strong. I am weak. Nope. That's not what he said. Let the weak say, I am strong. Why? Because sooner or later, when you say I am strong, I am strong, I am strong, what are you gonna be? Strong. You am strong. <laughs> you am strong. Wait. I want you to see something about that statement. That statement says, I am strong. You know why you're strong? 
because you're declaring I am the great God Almighty. Say it. I am strong. I am strong. You am oh! strong. I am fills you. I am fills you. Became valiant in battle. Turned to flight the armies of the aliens. I know Mike's going to be like, Pastor, we were trying to listen to you, but we really needed to get to sleep. And now we're fired up. We're going to go win the whole city of Tulsa. <laughs> see, that's what, see, this is what the word of God does to you every time you get in it. It stirs you up and builds you up and makes you strong. And literally, Proverbs chapter 4, I'm not going to turn there, 422 says, it is life to all who find it and health to all their flesh. Do you, need, yeah. do you need health in your body? Read the word. And quit reading the word about everybody failing. Read the words about power, strength, and, and dominion. There's a you can find a hundred verses in here to tell you that people failed, but you might as well read the verses that tell you you're strong. <laughs> 35 women received their dead to life again. Others were tortured, not accepting deliverance that they might obtain a better resurrection. This is interesting. Others had trial, mocking, scourging, chains, imprisonments. They were stoned, they were sawn in two. Tempted, slain, wandered about in sheepkin, goatskins, being destitute, afflicted, and tormented. Wow. Whom the world was not worthy. They wandered in deserts, mountains, dens, and caves of the earth. I want you to see all of that. There's people that there's people today. <laughs> we went in Tulsa, but however, we will rest first. <laughs> Amen. You guys need to rest. And all these, having obtained a good testimony through faith, did not receive the promise, God having provided something better for them. You ready? Let's keep reading. Now we're going down to 12. Um, let's go down to 12, verse 5. Have you forgotten the exhortation which speaks to you as sons? My son, do not despise the chastening of the Lord. Watch this. Nor be discouraged when you are rebuked by him. For whom the Lord loves, he chastens. And scourges every son whom he receives. If you endure chasing, God deals with you as sons. For what son is there whom a father does not chasten? But if you are without chastening, of which all have become partakers, then you are illegitimate and not sons. Verse 9. Furthermore, we've had human fathers who corrected us and paid them. We paid them respect. Shall we not much more readily be in subject to the father of the spirits and live? For there indeed for a few days chastened us and seemed best of them. But he for our profit that we might be partakers of his holiness. Just stick with me. No chastening seems joyful for the present, but painful. Nevertheless, afterward, it yields the, yields the peaceable fruit of righteousness to those who've been trained by it. Now let's uh, let's say something about this. Let's say something about this. And I'm going to grab my Bible program for a minute while I'm saying it. Remember this about our father. Our father gave us Jesus and his righteousness. The moment we are born again, our sins are completely purged from our life. The moment. The moment you say, Jesus, I receive you as my Lord and Savior. He is your Lord and he is your Savior. The moment the blood washes you, you are white as snow. Not someday. The moment you are born again. He takes all of your sin and gives you all of Jesus' righteousness. You're made a minister of reconciliation. You're now an ambassador of the kingdom of heaven. He's going to train you to be a king and a priest on this earth because you're heir of God and joint heir with Jesus. That's the moment you are born again. 
The only reason that any of us have to have the surge or the chastening rebuke of God is when we ain't listening. See, there's this old denominational picture of God is this mean God in the sky going to beat you down with the club. No. No. Jesus said, add these verses. We're not going to turn there. Watch this. In John 17, 20 through 24. Jesus said that we should be one with the Father. Well, can you see the Father getting a, a, a scourge out and whipping himself? <laughs> see, all of a sudden, we got to get to the point where we say, hold it. He doesn't need to scourge me anymore. I'm going to walk with him. And no matter what he says to me, I'm going to say, well, I, don't, I don't need that. You, there ain't no reason to whip me. I don't need no scourging. Say it with me. I don't need no scourging. I don't need any scourging. You don't. Not in any sense of the word do I need to have a scourging. Why? Because I am willing to grow and develop in God. How about you? Now, let's go to Hebrews 12 um, and verse 8. But if you are without chastisement. Listen to the definition of this word. The word is paedia. Did you know that? I didn't. That's a very big word. Thank God for the Strong's exhaustive concordance. <laughs> well, listen to what it means. It means tutorage. It means oh, education. Yeah. It means training. Now watch this. Disciplinary correction. But it's not talking about a beaten. It's talking about discipleship, education, and growing, nurturing. See, this is where the King James language and the new King James, and this is, it's got a severe, a severe edge to it. Because the word chastening, when you go to the Greek, is literally talking about an education, a tutoring, and a growth and development. Well, there's a whole bunch of people in the kingdom that are afraid of God because they think he's going to beat them down. Yeah, yeah. Hold it. As soon as you're born again, as soon as you're born again, you are made the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. Father's no longer angry at you. Why would he be angry at you? He gave you Jesus' righteousness because your righteousness is not going to make it. You don't have no righteousness. <clears throat> you have nothing in your nature that gives you the ability to get to righteousness. Without Jesus' work, you don't get it. With Jesus' work, you get it all. Amen. Say it with me. With Jesus' work, I get it all. With Jesus' work, his righteousness. Is Amen. All. I'm going to just type it in, not on Facebook, but on YouTube. With Jesus righteousness, I get it all. Watch this now. Wow, this is an interesting night. It is. There's a whole bunch of people that read that chapter 12 and say, Well, I better go to the woodshed. God's gonna whoop me tonight. What are you, a rebellious son? I listen. If so quit it. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Wait. If so, I beg of you to stop. I want to go. Uh, I want to walk in the house and father would say, "Hey, it's my son." It didn't take me too long to see. I never needed to make my dad angry enough to give me a whooping ever again. Amen. And there's this whole doctrine in the body of Christ that says, well, you know, 
If you haven't had a good whipping by the father lately, you just don't know. You're just not doing the right thing. Are you kidding me? He filled me with his righteousness. Amen. Why would I ever go astray again? As soon as you get the revelation of the righteousness of God, you are never going to go astray. And there will never be another part of your life that's going to be out of order because you'd be like, hold it, hold it, hold it. I got all the beauty and the glory of Jesus righteousness. And all I had to do was receive it. And it gives me the ability to overcome absolutely everything in my life. Watch this. No matter what you've ever faced in your Christian life. No matter what you felt like you couldn't win, you couldn't beat, and this is just something I'm going to have to deal with the rest of my life. I am going to tell you right now. I'm going to tell you right now. Jesus' righteousness has the ability to take you past that in a way you never even knew existed. And it's called the free gift of righteousness. And you are not, you're not just someday educated into it. When you're born again, you become the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. Say this with me. I walk with God. I walk with God. I will be one with the Father. I will be one with the Father. Every and day. One with the Father. Amen. Say it. I am one with the Father. I am one with the Father. Now, let me, let me encourage some of you. This is an interesting night. Mm -hmm. This is very interesting. Some of you, this is a whole new doctrine to you. Some of you have been so trained in God's going to whoop you down that it is difficult for you to even see yourself as someone that God would be proud of. Well, I'm just a sinner saved by grace. Why would God ever be proud of me? You're either sinner or you're saved by grace. There's no other way around it. It's like a woman saying, I'm almost pregnant. No, you're not. You either are or you ain't. <laughs> there ain't no other way around it. If you're born again, you're no longer a sinner. If you're saved by grace, you're saved by grace. <laughs> now where are we at does anybody know where we're at i'm gonna get back to I, i'm in i'm in hebrews chapter 12 all of a sudden i'm like wait a minute where am i at here father well where we are is we're learning that our father is literally bringing us to a place where you're not ever going to have to have disciplinary disciplinary action let me ask you a question with Jesus here on the earth, how many verses do you and I have that Jesus went alone with the Father and he scourged him? Didn't happen. Why? Because he was trained to be one with the Father. He was trained by, by the Father to walk with the Father and to walk in grace and in the knowledge of our Lord and Savior. See, all of a sudden, we are coming to the revelation of hold it, hold it, hold it, hold everything. I have been made the righteousness of God. I received Jesus' blood. It washed me completely clean. I have been made white as snow. My sins are not imputed against me. My sins are not imputed against me. Therefore, I'm now white as snow. I like it, Chris. Sunday, I get it all. I'm one with the Father. You might say, Pastor, I'm really not there yet. Well, I understand. I understand the position. I understand your position. I've, I've been there. But the day I got that revelation, when that man of God stood in front of my face and said, do you not know what the righteousness of faith is? I'm going to tell you what. My life has not been perfect since then. 
But the revelation came this year as you and I studied this together that uh, all of a sudden, when we get the revelation, he has made me the righteousness of God. <laughs> it ain't about all my work and effort. It's about speak, Lord. I am going to be where you want me to be. I'm going to be my place in the body as you see fit. And now it's no longer what you got to work up, what you got to stir up, what you got to gather up, how, how great a plan you can create so that, so that um, everybody in the kingdom will say, wow, that's a great plan. You don't ever have to do any of that. You wake up every day and say, here am I, Lord. Where are we going today? And the days he gives you some place to go, you go. He said, sit down and be quiet. You sit down and be quiet. Because he's going to say both days to you. There's going to be whole periods of your life where he's going to be like, get in this set of verses right here, right now. Get in there. Get in there. And every time you sit down with your Bible, it's going to be the same verses, same verses, same verses, same verses, same verses. I have 64 verses right now that the Father is dealing with me on every day. 64 of them. And I find more every day to add to it. Why? Because the more I study this, what he's given me right now, the more I find. Say it. Speak, Lord. Speak, Your son is hearing. See, when you and I stand before that judgment seat of Christ and our works are tried with fire, you and I want Jesus to be able to say, Woohoo! Look who just walked in the throne room. Woo! This is my beloved son in whom I am well pleased. You ready? Let's go read it. We we read that chastening verse. If you're in the place where he's chastening you, you, you got to be faithful and listen to what he's saying and then deal with it effectively. <laughs> Are you feeling better now, Mary? Yeah, Mary? Here we go. Does anybody know where I'm trying to go? I'm trying to get to the parable. <laughs> I'm just turning pages. I'm, I'm going back over here. That's where I'm going. I'm going to the parable of um, the talents. That's where I'm going. To the parable of the talents because I want us to read this. So that... Matthew 25, and when we get there, hold on a second, Matthew 25, and Luke 19. Matthew 25 and Luke 19. Watch. <laughs> what an interesting night. Mm -hmm. we, we had fun talking about weather and Harleys and victories and um, what our day was like. And just like that, Father said, all right, let's get right into the word tonight. And here we are. And here we are. Yes, sir. <laughs> yes, sir. We'll do communion in a little while. So hang out with us. Thank God for a really good, effective coffee lady. And Chris Rich is an awesome versateer. Thank you, Chris. Chris Rich, thank you for being an awesome versateer. Yes, because while I'm being the awesome coffee lady, I just know that you're versateering for me. Thank you. Thank you, Shannon, that does it. Thank you, Gwen, when yes, you do it. Thank yes. you, Angel, when you do it. Mary, Pastor Rick, Phyllis Raymond. Phyllis and Rebecca. Rebecca, thank you. All y'all. 
All y'all. All y'all. If you don't know what that is, go with Mike and Shannon to Oklahoma. You'll learn. Or down to Kentucky. Here we are. We are now in uh, Matthew 25, and we're going down to verse 14. Look at this. Kingdom of heaven is likened unto a man traveling to a far country. Who called his servants and delivered goods to them. Watch this. To one he gave five talents, to another two, and to another one. Now look at this verse. To each one, according to his own several ability. And immediately he went on a journey. Say this with me. All of my talents and abilities. All of my talents and abilities. Were given to me when I was born. Yeah, were given to me. The moment you was conceived, God put his gifts, his talents, his abilities inside of you. The moment you were conceived. And they had a perfect destiny planned out for them. No matter what has come in your life, God is still working everything in his power to get you to that destiny he put in you. Say it with me. But all of those gifts, talents, and ability belong to the Father. They don't belong to you. <laughs> the sooner you say, thank you for the gifts you put on the inside of me, according to my own several ability, the sooner you're going to get the understanding that you got to listen to him every day where he wants you to use them gifts, talents, and abilities. Well, pastor, I thought they were just on, uh, well, how did Rush say it? Um, extra talent on, on loan from God, or I forget how he said it. He had this interesting statement he made about it. Wait a minute. He put those gifts in you according to your ability. Everything that you've ever seen about yourself and you had this big thought came, it's like, wow, that's a big dream. That's because inside of you is the ability to see that happen. Yeah. And, the desire to do it. and it was put there by God. See what it, see what it says? A great man was going to travel to another country. Jesus went to heaven and he put it inside of you, gifts, talents, and abilities and inside of me. All of the deceptive forces of this earth are trying to keep it down. God's trying to bring it alive. But the number one thing you got to do is get yourself in the right place with him so that he's inside of you bringing that gift alive, how he wants it brought alive. There's an old saying that, that, my, that parents used to make. They tell their kids, you can be anything you want to be. Well, okay, that's true. But the statement you should have said is you should be everything that God put you on this earth to be. Because that's huge. That's really huge. Ready? Let's keep reading. Say it. It's all by my ability, it's all by my ability that God put inside of me, God put inside of me. For, his for his kingdom. I love it. We say it all the time here. You ain't seen nothing yet. Mm -hmm. Quit. Re if you're resisting, stop. If you find yourself in the wrong spot, then I, I should not be doing this right here, right now. Then don't. <laughs> Just stop. What was it, Doctor Lester Summerall? Always told the young men. I remember he's back in the days he started preaching in the 30s. All right, so he preached all the way 30s, 40s, 50s, 60s, 70s, 80s, up into the you know 2000. All right, watch this. <laughs> in the 70s and 80s, when the church was really happening, built, churches were being built everywhere, he would, he would tell young men, no matter what, if all else fails, run. And he's like, well, wait, that doesn't make sense. We're, we, we've got to be um, strong and face the devil. He said, no, there's sometimes you got to be like Joseph and run. Yeah. <laughs> so... I heard him tell the story. So one day a young man came in to him and said, Dr. Somerville, thank you for telling me to run. He goes, what? 
He said, thank you for telling me to run. He goes, where did you run, son? He goes, I was in my office, in the pastor's office, and a lady came in for counseling. And he said, I never counsel a lady with the door closed because I don't believe in that. That's stupid. And he said, my wife was right across the hall in her office. And he said, so the door was open. And as soon as she sat down, she took her coat off and she was totally naked. <gasps> and he said, seriously? Yeah. He said, I heard you say, if all else fails, run. <laughs> and he said, I tripped over the garbage can on the way out the door, rolled out in the hall and headed down the, down the hallway. And the first person the lady saw was my wife. <laughs> Say it with me. If all else fails, run. <laughs> Wait, I got one more running story. <laughs> okay. I was, there was another man. He heard Dr. Summer. I'll say it. <clears throat> He's got a whole group of kids. And, um, I don't know, Puerto Rico or somewhere down there in the islands with him. And he said, we were street witnessing. Oh. And he said, somehow I got separated from everybody. And he said, I walked up to this lady, started witness to her. And he said, all of a sudden, he said, I realized she was a hooker. And he, he said, he said, so I looked at her and said, come out of her, you foul devil. And he's got, evidently she wants that devil. He said, she kept coming. He said, I'm buying you in Jesus' name. He said, she kept coming. So he said, I heard Dr. Summerall. Fall else fails, run. He goes, man, that hooker could really run. She was running really fast. Really? She chased him? <laughs> wait, 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 wait. How did I get on that? Does anybody know? Boy, I, don't really <laughs> I don't know how I got there, but that's a really good story. If all else fails, run. Yeah, amen. Hallelujah. Boy, I don't know going door to door anymore. You, you're you a brave soul going door to door now, man. And people oh, can open goodness. up that door. And... Yeah. I know people called to it. Let me just say this about that fact. If you do it, you better know you're called. Because you got to be able to handle what's going to go on when that door opens. Yeah. And some people are called to it. Can we get back to the verses yet? Sure. <laughs> Welcome, everybody, on YouTube. If you want to sign in with us, that's cool. Welcome, everybody, on Facebook. If you want to sign in and say hi to us, that's cool. We'd like to know who you are, where you're from. Most of all, click like or love so that we can... <clears throat> See your name and pray for you. Here we are. Verse 16. He who received five talents, went and traded with them, made another five talents. He who received two, gained two more. He who received one, went and dug a hole in the ground and hid his Lord's money. After a long time, you know, like at the rapture of the church, the Lord returned. The Lord of those accounts came and settled accounts with him. He who had received five talents came and brought with him five other talents, saying, Lord, you delivered to me five talents. Look, I have gained five more talents besides them. This is verse 20, but I want you to see something. They knew they were going to be judged on taking their gift and making it better. I'm going to tell you right now. When you get on the other side. And you stand before Jesus, <clears throat> you better thoroughly expect, based on Monday, 15 March 2021, that, the, that Jesus is going to judge your works and expect you to have produced. Yeah. Now watch. He makes, he makes no unjust expectation of you or me. What did this master, our master Jesus, expect from these servants? You ready for this? Measurable growth in reasonable time. If you will, guys, write that in. Measurable growth 
in reasonable time. It was a youth group. We ended up at a house of devil worshipers. It was scary. Oh, no. I never went to that neighborhood again. <laughs> we did get invited in and sat down to talk to them. <laughs> yeah, God was with us that night. But wow, if you're going to do that, you better know you're assigned because... When you walk in that house like that, then people have given themselves over to the devil. And you have authority if you're supposed to be there. That's good. Everybody, everybody type it in. Somebody type it in. Measurable growth in reasonable amount of time. Type those words right in. Measurable growth in reasonable time. That's what this master was expecting of these servants. Now, whom the Lord loves, he gives instructional assignments. The last thing the father wants to do is give you a whooping. If you're receiving a whooping from the father, it's because you ain't listening. You're getting ready to do something that's going to hurt you. And you're getting ready to do something that's going to hurt you. Say it. Here am I. Here am I. Send me. Send me. Help me be what I'm supposed to be. Yeah, help me be what I'm supposed to be. That's the coolest thing about what goes on right here at the community of faith. We teach every one of you, you, you have gifts, talents, and abilities. Mm -hmm. Naturally, I say to you every time you come here, I got things that I can have you help me do. I might say, do this, and you'd be like, no, nah, that ain't going to work. That ain't me. That's all right. There's a gift inside of you that this body needs. And as you do that, the blessing of God comes on you and his manifest presence manifests here. Look at verse 21. His Lord said to him, well done, good and faithful servant. You were faithful over a few things. I will make you ruler over many things. Enter into the joy of the Lord. Where do you figure out how to do all this stuff? It's in the secret place of the Most High every day, you and God alone by yourself. Amen. Somebody shout glory be to God. Glory be to God. See, all of a sudden, all the pressure's off you to produce somewhere. And it's just relax. In his presence. Everybody say, just relax. Just relax. <laughs> wait, wait, I'll, I'll, I'll take it off here. Ready? Oh, geez, I almost baptized my charging cord. <laughs> Ready? This is my phone. Just relax. Lay the phone down. Okay? Walk away. Pick up your Bible. Get the notes from tonight's sermon, tonight's message, and grab all those verses. Write them out on a piece of paper and say, help me, Lord. If you, if you look back how God has continually led us right here through the community of faith, he's given us a verse, he's given us a thought, and then we dive in and we study that same thought for a week, two weeks, a month. Yeah. So all of the verses you're going to get are pretty much about that same thing. Mm -hmm. And as you're studying throughout that month, you're building strength, building strength, building strength, building strength. Some of you are so much stronger than what you even have any idea you are mm -hmm. because you've been so faithful to be here. And, and the faithfulness, God blesses faithfulness as much as he blesses anything else. I mean, some of you got to think about it. If he showed up right now tonight, he would say about you, well done, good and faithful servant, because you've made this community of faith what it is by your faithfulness of being here. You think about it. The people that have been here since the beginning. This is unheard of. It is. 
This is unheard of anywhere. These guys are amazing. And and so what we're not making glory of any single person, even ourselves. We saw an opportunity. We've moved in it and we've been faithful. And all of us, if the father found us, if he came tonight and he could come tonight, every prophecy is fulfilled. Mm -hmm. Everything that needs to be done is done. He can come tonight. Make sure you're watching. for him. And by the way, the movie that my mom recommended is called Before the Wrath. All right. Mm -hmm. It's totally different than what I was expecting. Yeah, me too. But it is a very good um, depiction of what's coming. I'm not going to give any more details because I don't want to. I don't want to. I'm not going to spoil it. All right. And very good analogy. And it's a very good analogy. Now listen. My mom told me it was on Amazon Prime. I don't like giving them people money, at all. But last night I found it on Christian Films, and I rented it for. You remember what it was? Four dollars. I rented it for like four dollars, and we watched it last night. It, here's the thing: it's talking about the marriage supper of the Lamb. It's talking about uh, communion, mm -hmm. and it's talking about the rapture. It's it's a very interesting. Hold on just a second. Very interesting all of a sudden, movie. all of a sudden, I'm like, well, you know what? I can just grab the link and I can put the link in over here okay. on YouTube. I'm not going to put it in on Facebook because Facebook doesn't seem to like it when I do that. All right. <laughs> so it's on YouTube. Now, if one of you want to put it over on Facebook, hallelujah, there's the link to it on the Christian movie channel that if you pay if you give them guys money it'll be a blessing to them and it's on pure flicks also okay that's cool thank you Gwen um oh good did you guys watch it Gwen if you haven't watched it yet I encourage you to watch it because it's very the people that put it on man they did a good job yeah. and it is nothing of what you're expecting but when you sit down, don't just keep watching because by the time you get to the end, you're like, wow, what an amazing, what an amazing correlation between the marriage supper of the land, communion, Galileans, and the rapture. Anyways, well done. Good and faithful servant is what we're looking for. <laughs> Thank you, Gwen. I. I don't, I don't have pure flex, and we don't watch many movies. Leanne and I don't, but that's just us. Um, the name of the movie is Before the Wrath. And I, on, on um, the Christian um, christianfilms.com, I forget what it was. I think it was $4, wasn't it? I think so. I don't, I don't know. And I actually didn't see it on the I, I think that's what it was, is $4. Um. Just thought I would look real good, real quick. Three dollars and ninety nine cents. There you go. All right. Back it has pure too. So, anyways, let's get back to the 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 the, um, the message here. When you and I stand before Jesus at the judgment seat of Christ, we're not going to the white throne judgment. That's where the sinners are going. We're going. To the judgment seat of Christ. He's the head of the church. He's the one that gives us the, that, that tries our works by fire. He's the one that says, well done. He's the one that says, go in and receive the joy of the Lord. Now, on that day, that's how everybody, all right, we talked about that. Now everybody get focused because I want to make sure I say this today. On that day, 
You are going to suffer loss. Just get it in your head. <laughs> Everybody's like, sign of the cross, Pastor. I ain't going to suffer no loss. <laughs> well, wait. Our works are going to be tried by fire. Those which had the pure motives of the things of God, that's gold, silver, precious stones. Those that we did that was just self-motivated or if I do this, people are going to see I'm a pretty good guy. I know you and I don't want to admit that we've ever done anything like that, but there's probably a few of those that we've done like that. That's going to go up in smoke. But because it's tried by fire, you still get your reward. You still get the reward of everything else. All right? Now, that crown that has those jewels in it is what you present before Jesus that day when we all cast our crowns before his feet and say, you alone are worthy. And what's going to be in that crown? Those jewels that we saw in Malachi chapter 3. Woo! Somebody ought to just shout glory, hallelujah. And he's going to look at us and say, well done. That's the power of 1 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 31, that says, if we would judge ourselves, we would not be judged. If every time we begin to do something in God, we say, hold it, hold it, hold it, Sam. Wake up. Go through the list. Check yourself. What? What did I do? I shut all y'all off and then got real serious with Sam of what Sam's doing. Why? Because how I do it, why I do it, where I do it, when I do it, all those questions have a, a, a root base of what is the purpose why you're doing this? And here's the cool thing. I don't have to be the judge of your diligence in God. You don't. Now watch. I'm the judge of every one of these wicked people who come here and make a mess on our program. Right? Mm -hmm. I don't let that happen. We, we nix them real quick. Mm -hmm. Matter of fact, we had a spammer that came on after the program was done into the, into the thing, and it got nixed by somebody else. <laughs> I went in there to deal with it and it's like, well, I guess that's already dealt with. Hallelujah. <laughs> that prayer that we pray, Jesus helped them come to themselves. Not just Jesus judged them was what I used to pray. But I've learned to begin to say, wait, Lord, we want their souls to become, we want them to come to you. Now we, we bind this work and they no longer get to steal money from good people who have honest hearts. And I mean that prayer very specifically, but I also mean, may they come to the saving knowledge of who Jesus is. Amen. May they come to the saving knowledge of who Jesus is. You know, let's, let's finish this chapter and then we'll be done. 22. I'm in Matthew 25, 22. He also had received two talents, came and said, Lord, you delivered me two talents. Look, I've gained two more talents besides them. Say it with me. Measurable growth. Measurable growth. In reasonable time. Jesus didn't. He didn't say, well, you dummy, you didn't make five like the other guy. He said, you have measurable growth. Watch. Enter into the joy of the Lord. 24. He who received the one talent came and said, Lord, I know you to be a hard man, reaping where you have not sown, gathering where you have not scattered. I was afraid and went and hid your talent in the ground. Look, here, here you have what is yours. Look what he said. The Lord answered him. 
you wicked and lazy servant. You don't want the father saying that to you. No. You know that I reap where I have not sown and gather where I have not scattered. So you ought to have deposited my money with the bankers. And at my coming, I would have received back my own with interest. What did he expect of him? Measurable growth. Even if it was just interest. Therefore, take the talent from him and give it to him who has 10 talents. For to everyone who has, more will be given, and they'll have an abundance. But from him who does not have, even what he has will be taken away. Look at verse 30. And cast the unprofitable servant out in the outer darkness, where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Say it. All the Father expects of me, All the Father expects of me. is measurable growth. Is in a reasonable amount of time. In a reasonable amount now let's of look time. at one more factor that's in this parable. And we'll put it all together with everything that the father said tonight. <laughs> this is interesting. Now this is a story. This is a parable that is relating Jesus to the master. And Jesus said, you knew that I was. But Jesus is not one who reaps where he doesn't sow. But he said of that man, because you believed me to be that way, you should have responded in that way. Say it with me. I'm getting my believer fixed. <laughs> getting my believer fixed. Amen. I'm going to find out who father is so that I know exactly what's going on here because I want my believer fixed. No Christian cinema that link you put on. Well, she said it was three ninety nine, and I was wondering if that was the pre the pure flicks. No price Christian was... cinema. That link you put on. Well, I don't know what that means, but help me understand. Anyways, Mary said, "Are, are the talents money?" Well. In this situation, um, yes. But let's say it this way. In every situation of life, it's going to be whatever it is. Say this with me. It's my gifts, talents, and ability. It's how much money I have and what I do with it. <laughs> it's a good movie and you and I declare Rebecca you will find it I declare Amen. you will find it and you will enjoy it don't fall asleep while you're watching it don't watch it late at night when you're going to fall asleep you don't want to have to rent it twice but it's it's a very good movie it's a, it's a it is just it's, it's like the most movie. interesting yeah. it's the most interesting it, it, it's the most, it's just amazing. It's good. You'll like it. All right, ready? Here we go. Mary said our talent's money. Well, your money is part of the talents. Say it. Your money is part of the talents. Yeah. But the talents are also your physical talents. The talents are, are, are who you are on this earth. What is the gift he put inside of you that he wants on this earth? Let me say this to everybody sitting here. It doesn't matter how old you are. Your days of being used by God are not over. Amen. Amen. Bless you, Chris. Love you. Watch this. Everything, of, every part of your life is your gifts, your talents, and your ability. Your time. God will begin to say, what are you doing with your time? He will. You might say, Pastor, I hear your voice in it when I hear him saying it. Because <laughs> here, listen, watch this. 
I hear Dr. Barclay's voice sometimes when I'm being, when I am moving and doing things and, and making changes. Why? I've heard all of his messages. He's been my pastor for 30 years. But actually what I'm hearing is the voice of the shepherd. And I'm hearing the voice of the good shepherd through the voice of my shepherd. And the most important thing we learn is that the father wants to be one with you and I. And he wants us to be just like Jesus on this earth. And when Jesus came to the end of his life, he did it without sin. He paid the price. He completed his course. He finished his race. Yeah. And watch this. He went to heaven and he sat down at the right hand of the majesty and high. And the greatest thing that you and I can do in our life every day is just walk with him. Amen. Is just walk with him. Most of all, I want everybody to think about this. Say it with me. I'm going to suffer loss on judgment day. I don't want to say it. I <laughs> people, don't want to say it. People are like, whoa, I can't believe you just said that, Pastor. <laughs> but wait, wait. But listen, it's because your works are tried by fire. You're not suffering the loss of hell. The moment you grab a hold of this teaching and say, wait a minute. I'm from this day forward that I'm not going to suffer loss another day. Amen. What, what, what does that make you do all of a sudden? That makes you get real serious about this word. That makes you get real serious about, wait a minute. I need all the righteousness of God. I need all the Holy ghost I can get. I need every part of God because when I stand before him, I will stand before him and he'll say, Woo! Samuel J. Cottle is the next one up. I'll go, listen, in heaven, there won't be anything to hinder me from doing backflips and cartwheels <laughs> right into the throne room with Jesus. Hallelujah. How you doing? I'm awesome. Turn the fire on. Let's go. Woo Wait, why can you be that confident, Pastor? Because I judge myself today. Yeah, amen. amen. Say it with me. If I will judge myself, if I will judge myself, I will not, I be, will judged. not be judged. Wait, so will my stuff still get burnt? Oh yeah, that's because there's, <laughs> there's nothing you can do about those days behind you. Yeah. Say it. I can't change yesterday. I can't change it. What are you gonna do? You can't change it. You can just live in love. And live in the power of the Holy Spirit today. From this point on, you can just live and walk in power and strength and might and dominion and authority. And you can do it from this day forward. You can't change yesterday. And earn some jewels. There's nothing you can do about it. It's already done. It's already in history books. If you got judgment and it burns up with fire, hallelujah, keep moving. Because... From today forward, you get to build that crown, however it is that God's given it to you to build. And think about it. Your life is filled with the righteousness of Jesus. Say it with me. My life is full of righteousness. My life is full of righteousness. Therefore, all of my gifts will be used properly. Therefore, all of my gifts will be used properly. Amen. Say it. I got a new nature. No, you guys weren't straining hard enough when you say it. Say, I got a new nature. I got a new nature. <laughs> <laughs> Hallelujah. I was trying to read comments and they just keep jumping, so I just quit. Here we go. Got a good bunch of folks on tonight. I remember the day I heard this teaching about I'm going to suffer loss. And um, I don't know if you ever heard of the man. His name's John Bevere. He was teaching a series called Driven by Eternity. Yeah, no, that's a good one. And um, powerful teaching. 
And if you could see the first sessions, the first time he made it, I was in those videos because I was there when he was teaching it and recording it. And I didn't, I, I missed like the first three sessions or four sessions. <laughs> and I went in and sat down in the church. My daughter, Jesse and I, watch this. I sat down to sister Pen next to sister Pentecost. Got her hair up in a little bun, got a, got a longer dress on her sleeves are down past her elbows. She's sister Pentecost. She, you could tell she's been around the Pentecostal church for years. You know, she just got that look. And I, we sat down next to her and um, there was, yeah, probably 15 minutes before the service started. And uh, I just leaned over. I said, how's it, how's it been, ma'am? She goes, well, right now I think I'm going to hell. <laughs> no. She said, but I think tonight John's going to get me back in heaven. I think I'm actually going to go to heaven. <laughs> And, and I'm like, oh, my Lord, if this lady's going to hell, I am for sure in trouble. But what an amazing revelation. That in this short period of time, everybody listen to this. If you live to be 120 years old, what is that compared to eternity? Oh, my God. Nothing. James called it a breath, a vapor. Our, your life is but a vapor. It's but a vapor, yeah. A hundred years in eternity? And people on this earth will spend 40 years for a financial retirement and go to church. John Bevere. Powerful teaching. Now, I know that there's been several times that um, they have edited. So I don't know what, you know, I don't know. I don't know everything's about. Then it was 12 sessions. If you can find the old, if you can find the old version of it, it's a good one. Mine was on videos. <laughs> but here's the deal. When he got done but was session number 12, and I realized, wait a minute, in my life, I'm going to suffer some loss. But from this day forward, I can make a decision on whether I'm going to suffer any loss or not. Listen, all of a sudden, everything about you changes. You watch your mouth. You ready for this? You watch your post online. You watch everything you do because you're like, wait, 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 wait. <laughs> I am not going to suffer loss on this. Immediately what's going to happen to you is you're going to get a new revelation of the Holy Spirit of God on the inside of you. Because you're going to be like, wait, 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 Holy Spirit of God. I am not doing anything that's going to get consumed by fire on that day. I want gold, I want gold, silver, and precious stones to be what's in my crown in heaven. I don't want to have a Burger King crown that goes in the fire. And it doesn't matter who you are. It doesn't matter your age. It doesn't matter your financial stability. It don't matter nothing right now today. Nothing, none of that matters except from this day forward. You say, I'm walking with you, and I will judge everything in my life by the thought of what is it going to look like on the other side of eternity? Yeah. Pastor, did you freak out? Uh, yeah, for about, about four hours while he was teaching it. I'm like, I'm going to hell. Would you just open up the altar? <laughs> Jesus, Lord, have mercy. I'm pastor in the church. I'm going to hell. Oh, my goodness. I'm going to hell. I, now I'm looking at Sister Pentecost, but she looks like she's got hope in her eyes. I just keep looking at her. Well, we're next to her. Everything's all right. Glory be to God. The rapture hasn't happened. But what did it do? It wasn't a message about the wrath of God. It was a message about you have today. Make it a good one. Yeah. Say it. I have today. I have today. I'm going to make it good. I am going to make it good. 
all of a sudden, everything about your uh, about your about your <laughs> uh, the first one was uh, twelve sessions long. I think when the first one was eight, ten, and sixteen episodes. That's interesting. <laughs> I have no idea because I wasn't a part of any of that. <laughs> but it does, it's not going to matter if it's by John Bevere. You're going to be able to find it, and it's it's a great teaching. Yeah, boy, it is. Yeah. It's a great teaching. And um, I don't know where John is by now. I, I don't know. I don't know what he's doing. I, that's he, at, at that point in my life, I had actually, I forget what happened. Something happened and I got connected and I actually got an invitation from him to go and be a part of that meeting where they, where they taped it. That is awesome. It was one of the coolest things in my life. And then, yeah. and then, and then we got, uh, I ordered the video so I could show it at church. Mm -hmm. We're sitting there watching it in church. And then all of a sudden I'm on the camera. I'm like, she glad I wasn't picking my nose. <laughs> what is the other bait of Satan? That was another one that he did. Was actually, very good. Yeah. Now, I'm not telling you to become a follower of John Bevere. I'm not doing that. I'm telling you this was a powerful message. Mm -hmm. That um, is one of those core foundations that was that hit my life. It's another one of those days that radically changed me forever because it was the day I got the revelation of first Corinthians chapter 11, verse 31. That if I would judge myself today here, when I get to the other side, I'd miss it. That, that horrible judgment that you don't want to see. And I'm not, I'm not declaring that everybody here, we got a lot of people here. We got people on YouTube, people on, um, blog talk radio people on Facebook. I'm not telling you that you have to, that, that your past, you're going to suffer loss, but all of a sudden when we think, wait, what was my motive? Why I did some of the things I did and what was my actions while it was going on and any part of our life that's not surrendered to God that has the ability to take us in the wrong way, doing the wrong thing. Mm -hmm. But it's not because your heart is wrong. You're going against God. That's why That's why. as soon as we got started tonight, the Holy Spirit said, I want you to add those verses from Hebrews that the chastening of the Lord are not pleasant. Well, wait a minute. Once you realize you're filled with the righteousness of God, the chastening, the chastisement of scourging will never be yours again. Why? Because you got the righteousness of God. Once you get that revelation of Jesus, You'll never violate that righteousness another day. You'll keep this mouth shut no matter what. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You'll go in, you'll go into Facebook and delete post. <laughs> nope. I made a post one day just recently, and I'm like, it wasn't very long on there. I went in there next. And I'm like, wait, 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 wait. I'm not gonna get judged for that. Was I right? Yeah. Was it out of the where I should be? It was out of where I should be because when I'm doing it, I'm feeling that check on the inside. I wasn't sinning or doing anything else. He was checking me saying, that's not what I need you doing right now. So guess what? Don't do it. Why? Because if you judge yourself, then on that other side, on the other side, you will have already judged your actions and you'll be in the right place at the right time with the right people doing the right thing for the right reason. In Jesus' mighty name. This been good tonight. Been this good. is really good, yeah, I think. Very good. This is really good. <laughs> We're getting done an extra half an hour early, Rebecca. Just for you, so you can watch it. Amen. Let's pray and we'll receive communion. Ready? Father, in the name of Jesus. Father, in the name of Jesus. I thank you for your wonderful word. <laughs> oh, my 
goodness. <laughs> Here we go. <laughs> We're okay, everybody. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> wow. Okay. Let's try it again. And this time, Sister Leanne's going to lead us in prayer. <laughs> <laughs> you might say, what's so funny? Well, you got to think about every time she hears me say, say it with me. She's got to be like, is he is he like saying, say it with me? Or are you just saying it and pray? And we might as well just pray. Here we go. Hallelujah. <laughs> we love it. And we laugh about it all the time. So let's pray. Keep going ahead. <laughs> Hallelujah. Oh, thank you, Father. Father, we thank you for Jesus, the living word, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross despising the shame. And now he's sat down at the right hand of the majesty and high, and he's our savior, our Lord. And he's the head of the body of which we're the body parts. And you have promised us that we get to be the fullness of the Godhead on this earth to accomplish your great work. Oh, my, oh, my, oh, my, oh, my, oh, my. We receive this life from you, Jesus. We receive this life from you. Thank you. And as we say every time we're here, here am I. Send me. I go for the right reason at the right place in the right time with the right people doing the right thing so that your work is done on this earth as it is in heaven. And we give you glory and we give you honor and we give you praise in the mighty name of Jesus. In the mighty name of Jesus. <clears throat> First Corinthians chapter 11. If I don't just jump in and go, I'm going to just keep right on preaching. First Corinthians chapter 11. New covenant worship. Some of you might be like me. And this page is getting some pretty good wear in your Bible. So the other day I was thinking, I'm going to buy a Bible that I can open up and use it specifically for communion. Because this page is getting kind of thin with my fingers being on it every night. Wow. You notice that? Yeah. I like to open up the book, though. I like, I like this being my mirror. I like... I like the glory of the Lord to come off this book and get on me and get on you. Amen. Rebecca, Sister Gwen, Chris, Sunday, Mary, Pastor Rick, bless you guys, all of you. There's a bunch of you that are still on. And, and uh, you may not have said anything, but we sure love you. And we're sure glad you're here. And I'll say it again. Every one of you that watch this later date, get your communion elements out and receive communion with us. And receive the life of God that we're getting ready to receive right now. Hmm. Wow. Wow. I got some really good closing verses we're going to read. I can't wait to get there. Should we just close right now? 
First Corinthians chapter 11, verse 23. For I received from the Lord that which I also delivered to you. That the Lord Jesus on the same night in which he was betrayed took the bread. When he had given thanks, he broke it and he said, take, eat. This is my body, which is broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Verse 25, in the same manner after supper, he took the cup saying, this cup is the new covenant in my blood. As often as you drink it, drink it in remembrance of me. Verse 26. For as often as you eat this bread, and as often as you drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's redemptive work until he comes. Verse 28. Let a man examine himself, and so let him eat of the bread and drink of the cup. Verse 31. For if we would judge ourselves, we would not be judged. May God add his blessing to the reading of his holy word in Jesus' mighty name. In Jesus' mighty name. When you look at that whole message that we preached tonight, and now you look at this, all of a sudden, it's pretty powerful force. And that's why every time we come here, he has us receive communion together. Every time. No matter what. Well, I guess it's not no matter what, because there's been a few times we haven't. But the bottom line is his blood transforms you immediately to the righteousness of God. You've got to get the revelation of it. But you no longer worry about sin because you get to walk in righteousness. Say it. I'm walking in righteousness every day. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Pastor, it's communion. Quit your screaming. No. <clears throat> Verse 26 says, for us often, that means do it often, as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's redemptive work, every bit of it, from start to finish. Wait. From before the foundations of the earth, when he said, I will go and be the lamb. Until he's seated at the right hand of the Father and will be sitting on the throne and will cast their crowns before him. From the before the foundations to the casting of the crowns. That's the redemptive work of God. It's all part of it. Glory, hallelujah. And you and I get to judge ourselves. We won't be judged. Ready? Let's pray a prayer of salvation. If you've never made Jesus Lord of your life, now's the time to do it. If you've been away from God and you're just coming back, or you've just been running around trying to get away from the spirit of religion trying to control you, here's a prayer of rededication. And if you're walking with God every day to the best of your ability, this is just a hallelujahification. Just shouting glory. Thank you, Jesus. I know every time I pray this prayer, I feel God wash me with his blood. Well, Pastor, sooner or later, will you get free? Oh, no, I was free the first time he did it. Religion taught me to be bound. Jesus made me free. He made me completely free. He made me. He takes you from. Ready? Let's pray. I was just going to preach, but we're going to pray. Pray this with me. Father, in Jesus name. Father, in Jesus name. I know I need you in my life. I know I need you in my in life. In every area. In every area. And you said. And you said. Jesus is the door. Jesus is the door. <clears throat> to salvation. To salvation. Jesus, I believe in you. Jesus, I believe in you. And I receive you. And I receive you. And according to John chapter 1. And according to John chapter 1. When I do. When I do. 
you give me the power. You give me the power to become a child of God. To become a child of God. I believe in you. I believe in you. I receive in you. I receive you as my Lord and Savior. As my Lord and Savior. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Just receive it. Hold it right to you. Do this. Take your hands and say, "There's all my sin." There's all my sin. I have no ability to deal with it. I have no ability. Put your hands out and say, I receive all of your righteousness. I receive all of your righteousness. Filling my life. Right? Filling my life. Fill me with your Holy Spirit. Fill me with your Holy Spirit. So I live in power. So I live in power. Understand the word of God. Understand the Pray word of God. in my heavenly language. Pray in my heavenly language. And live a successful life. Successful as life. a believer every day. As a believer every day. I pray this in Jesus' mighty name. I pray this in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. 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 All through Jesus' life on this earth, he said, be made whole. And they were made whole. And then he would say, and thy sins be forgiven you. And then he would say, and thy sins be forgiven you and be made whole. So which way is the perfect way? However, God leads you to salvation. For those of you that just prayed that prayer for the first time, welcome to the family of God. This is what we look like. We all wear Harley Davidson shirts. All right. Well, some of us do. I like my Harley shirt. But I do have a Camaro shirt that I really like, too. Mm -hmm. Now, in this prayer you just prayed, you went from darkness to light in one prayer. You should have experienced it. In one prayer, you went from fear to faith. You might say, Pastor, what does the feeling feel like? No, it's not a feeling. It's an experience. It's a revelation. Something just happened. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> you went from your sin to Jesus' righteousness in one prayer. And so this is so cool. You've been adopted into the family of God. And the father said, make him a minister of reconciliation. And they get to be an ambassador of the kingdom of heaven. And now we're going to train him to be kings and priests on this earth for our God. In one prayer. In one prayer. All of that happened. You might say, I don't even know how. Well, neither do any of the rest of us. But just receive it because that's what went on. Amen. And now you're ready to receive the communion elements. They put my email address and website in there. So you have the ability to get in contact with me. Say, hey, preacher, tell me your story. Give me a prayer request. Ask me a question. I want to help you walk with God. I can help you. I've got over, I forget what it is. And it's like 300 videos we've got online mm -hmm. and maybe it's 300. Well, we're almost at a year. So it's probably 312, 52 weeks of Sundays. Anyways, we got 300 videos that, we'll, that we can hook you up to, to give you the discipleship that you need. Mm -hmm. We want to do it. Because we know Jesus here. And all these folks that's with us, these are some serious believers. We want you to know our God like we do. We want you to enjoy the kingdom of God like us. And we're glad to help you in Jesus' mighty name. Ready? Let's receive the communion elements. Get you some bread and some juice. Get you some bread and some water. And receive the communion elements with us. You ready? Pray this prayer with us. Father, in Jesus' name. Father, in Jesus' name. I bless these elements. I bless these elements. For this time of communion with you. For this time of communion with you. Jesus, you were wounded. Jesus, you were wounded. For my transgression. For my transgression. You were bruised. You were bruised. For my iniquity. For my iniquity. The chastisement for my peace, the chastisement for my peace is, upon you, Lord. is upon you, Lord, and by your stripes, and by your stripes 
I am healed. I am healed. In my spirit, in my soul, and in my body. In my spirit, in my soul, and in my body. In my mind, my will, and my emotions. In my mind, my will, and my emotions. Nothing missing, nothing broken. Nothing missing, nothing broken. Every joint supplying. Every joint supplying. In my body. In my body. From your body, Jesus. From your body, Jesus. In the body of Christ in my community. In the body of Christ in my community. And right here in this community of faith. And right here in this community of faith. In Jesus' mighty name. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Amen. Let's receive the bread together. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Thank you. And now we lift up the cup of blessing, <clears throat> the blood of Jesus. Pray this with me. By the blood of Jesus. By the blood of Jesus. I have been redeemed. I have been redeemed. <laughs> By the blood of Jesus. By the blood of Jesus. I have reconciliation. I have reconciliation. With you, my father. With you, my father. By the blood of Jesus. By the blood of Jesus. Every sin. Every sin. Has been placed in remission. Has been placed in remission. In my life. In my life. I'm a new creation. I'm a new creation. All things have passed away. All things have passed and away. And all things have become new. And all things have And I new. thank you for it. And I thank you for it. By the blood of Jesus. By the blood of Jesus. Every plague. Every plague. Has to pass over. Has to pass over. And cannot be on me or my family. By the blood of Jesus, I come boldly to the throne room of grace as a child of Almighty God, where I find grace, mercy, and help for my assignment every day by the blood of Jesus. And the word of my testimony, and the word of my testimony I, overcome. I overcome by the blood of Jesus, by the, blood of Jesus the, accuser of the, brethren, the accuser of the brethren is cast down in my life, is cast down in my and, life. There no more and there is no more condemnation. My conscience is purged. My, conscience is purged. my, robes, are made white. my robes are made white. And I will always be. And I will always the glorious, church, the glorious church, without spot, wrinkle, or any other blemish. Without spot, wrinkle, or any other blemish. In Jesus' mighty name. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Amen. And amen. Let's receive it. Thank you. Thank you, Lord. And now. Sister Leanne is going to sing us a special about the blood of Jesus. <laughs> so let's sing our song. We always sing. The blood that Jesus shed for me way back on Calvary. The blood gives me strength from day to day. It will never lose its power. It reaches to the highest mountain. And it flows to the lowest valley. The blood that gives me strength from day to day. It will never lose its power. It reaches to the highest mountain and it flows to the lowest valley the blood that gives me strength 
From day to day, it will never lose its power. Revelation 19. That's where we're going. This is our closing verses. I really am starting to enjoy the book of Revelation a whole lot more than I ever have in my life. Because I'm no longer freaked or afraid. Say it. I'm no longer freaked or afraid. I'm no longer freaked or afraid. Say it. I know who I am. I know, who I know where I'm going. And I know I get to judge myself. You ready? Revelation 19, 1. And um, we might just read this whole chapter. I don't know. It's good. After these things, I heard a loud voice of a great multitude in heaven saying, Hallelujah. Salvation and glory and honor and power belong to the Lord our God. For true and righteous are his judgments. Because he has judged the great harlot who corrupted the earth with her fornication and has avenged her blood by the servant shed her blood. Again, he said, hallelujah. Her smoke arises. I'm not reading the verses I'm looking for. What happened? <laughs> Hold on. Well, that was the whole chapter. All right. Verse four, and the 24 elders and the four living creatures fell down and worshiped God who sat on the throne. Amen. Hallelujah. Then a voice came from the throne saying, praise our God, all you his servants and those who fear him, both small and great. Verse six, and I heard as it were the voice of a great multitude as the sound of many waters and as the sound of many thundering saying, Alleluia. For the Lord God omnipotent reigns. Let us be glad and rejoice and give him glory. For the marriage of the lamb has come and his wife has made herself ready. And to her it was granted to be arrayed in fine linen, clean and bright. Look at this. For the fine linen is the righteous Acts of the saints. Say it. My actions, My actions on, this earth on this earth that are filled with righteousness, filled with righteousness that, Jesus has made me, that Jesus has made me is the fine linen of heaven. Is the fine linen of heaven. 19. And he said to me, write. Blessed are those who are called to the marriage supper of the Lamb. And he said to me, these are true sayings of God. And I fell at his feet to worship him. But he said, see that you do not do that. I'm your servant and of your brethren who have the testimony of Jesus. Worship God. For the testimony of Jesus is the spirit of prophecy. You want to say it with me? The fine linen of the, bride of the bride is the righteous acts of the saints done for the right reason at the right time for the right people for the right motive and the mighty name of Jesus we pray in the mighty name of Jesus What would we do without you, Rebecca Smith? <laughs> I believe the other night, Rebecca, when when you said it is time for me to pray in the Holy Spirit right now, I believe that there's a difference that happened to you. You've been a different person ever since then. Hey, Chris is back. She is. Welcome, Chris. That's awesome. Sunday, Chris, we love you guys. 
Many interesting serpent topic in the list under the pastor who did driven by the attorney. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, he's powerful. There's a lot of powerful teaching there. Um, and his first one is the bait of a Satan. The bait of a Satan. Jesus. Help us. The bait of Satan. He debated about it. Yeah, that was really, really that, was, good. that one's about yeah. offense. Isn't that about offense? Yeah. Yeah. And there's another one, uh, the fear of the Lord. That's one that's really good. And then you got um, Driven by Eternity. He's got about, there's a whole bunch of them. Anyways. <laughs> we don't want to say good night to you because when we say good night, Rebecca, then you hang up. But if we keep talking, you talk to us. <laughs> I did say good night to you, Rebecca. We love you, Rebecca. Good night. Go watch your movie. Eat your popcorn all by without us. What are you going to do with eating your popcorn without us? Enjoy. We love you guys. Mary Pastor Rick, bless you. Chris and Sunday, bless you guys. It's good to have you, Chris. You keep, you just keep walking. God's got this thing. God's got it. You're doing the right thing. Kelly Delkert, I never saw you hang up. Mike and Shannon, I, I suppose you guys are snoring Harley yeah. style, but you're listening. And um, we call you guys blessed in the mighty name of Jesus. We call you blessed in the mighty name of Jesus. In the mighty name of Jesus. In the mighty name of Jesus. Uh, you know, Gwen, cool thing about Driven by Eternity is he did his best to keep him about 40 minutes. But you can tell he had a whole lot more equipment. A whole lot more um, diligence and study information than what he gave us. But um, if you can find those original ones, um, man, they're, they were powerful. I'm sure the next ones have been, you know, edited and stuff. But you'll, I know this, you will enjoy that oh, teaching. Yeah. Yeah. I know you'll enjoy that teaching. Well, that's it, guys. Tomorrow night, we're going to be studying Grow in Grace and in the knowledge of the Lord and Savior. When you go to your secret place. Turn your phone off. <laughs> yeah, you Get your Bible out. And judge yourself now, please. So that on the other day, on the other side, you don't, we don't have anything burned up by fire. Thank God for the opportunity to walk with our Father and be one with mm -hmm. Him. Love you. Love you, Sunday. Love you, Chris. It's so good to have you guys with us. We're it so is. We're so honored that to have you here. We really are. Gwen and Dave, we love you guys. Pray for you every day, all day long. We pray for your family. And uh, pray for your business. I pray for all those buildings around you to be yours. So, How is Dave's shoulder doing, Gwen? Healed? Healed. Dave's shoulder is healed. Amen. And so is the eardrums. Oh, yeah. Nate's ears. Yeah. And Lori's tailbone. Amen. Healed in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. In Jesus' mighty name. Well, who else is with us? Well, Mary Pastorick. We call you blessed and healthy and whole. Tanvir body. There he is. Brother Tanvir, we love you. Blessings from Silecott. Well, bless you, sir. Anybody else? Brother Dan Kahlo, he's probably still with us. Love you, Dan. Dan and Gwen, we love you. you. We don't always see Gwen. Um, but uh, we love you, Gwen. We call you blessed. We don't always see Dave, but we love you too, Dave. In the mighty name of Jesus. In the mighty name of Jesus. Is that enough for time to go? All right, until we see you again, this is what we say. Na, 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 na. We beat the 90 second lady. Oh. <laughs> okay, until we see you again, we say, we, we love, love you, you. and God, God loves, loves you. you. And, and Jesus, Jesus is, is Lord. Lord. Good night, Phyllis. Good night, God Phyllis. Bless you. Thank you for being our friends. Yes. Thank you for being our friends and our fellow laborers. Yes. It's amazing. And last but not least, we say good night to YouTube. We sure love you guys. Thanks for all your help. 
in Jesus' mighty name.